Good day everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to another video. It's been a while since I uploaded a proper video as I've been enjoying my summer holidays down at my caravan. But now I'm back and I'm ready to entertain you all once more. So strap in, get ready and enjoy the video. Today's video is another video centred around my Acromermax, but instead of talking to you about them escaping, I'm going to go more in depth about not just what their requirements are, but what it's like receiving them, and how to ensure they make it to the first few nights in your care. So let's start from the beginning. Let's say you're browsing the internet and come across a video of some peculiar ants carrying leaves, or you decide you want to spice up your hobby by challenging yourself and to see if you could successfully raise a colony. Before you make the decision though, there's a lot that needs to be considered. Leaf cutters are a big investment and take a lot of time and effort, not to mention the space required. Either way, you still want to give it a go. So, where do you begin? Before you buy the ant, you'll need a suitable setup for them. First, look for a good place for the setup to go. A desk or a shelving unit would be good. As you can see, I've got mine on this desk with my other colonies. So you found a suitable place for your setup. But what kind of setup are you going to go with? There's two options. You can either go DIY, do it yourself, or you can buy one online. I've gone for the DIY option as it's a bit cheaper, but it's a bit riskier. Purchasing online is much safer because the setup is built specifically for the ants, but it will cost you quite a lot. There are a few ways you can do DIY and a couple of videos that shows you how. I've just gone with a plastic tub with a few centimetres of plaster of Paris, with a plastic tube going in to hydrate it. Then I've connected the outward and the refuse chamber using some piping I bought online. That was the only real expense other than the ants. So, you're all set and ready to buy the ants, right? Well, there's still a few more things you need to do. The setup still needs to meet the ants' requirements. So not only do you need a certain temperature, you also need a certain humidity. Make sure the humidity is as high as possible. The plaster will keep the humidity up, no problem. And make sure the temperature stays between 24 to 25 degrees. That's ideal. But if it goes a bit over, don't worry. Just make sure the temperature drops back down afterwards. Anything over 30 though will most likely kill your ants, so make sure it doesn't go over that. I like to use a pulse proportional thermostat that's connected to my heat cable, so the temperature doesn't go too high and it stays just right for the ants. Although plaster can be used as a base, there are other alternatives, as plaster can flood and this can harm the fungus or the ants. Clay balls is another thing that I've seen people use. Just make sure they don't have any added chemicals though. Another popular setup is the fish tank one. You get a fish tank and fill it with water and place a pot in the middle of it that you can put the ants on. If you install a water heater, this will automatically keep the temperature humidity up for you. From the time this video is uploaded, I only know two websites that sell leaf cutter pods, and that is Wakushi and High Tech Ant. So, you've got everything ready to go, and you're prepared to buy the ants. But where are you going to get them from? There are a few shops that sell them, such as Ants HQ or Ants Davy. I actually got mine from Ants Davy. You can message him in advance, and he'll make sure everything's ready, and that the ants arrive in a pristine condition. Remember that these ants aren't cheap. I had to pay over 150 quid for these girls, but it was definitely worth it. A few days of waiting go by, and you hear a knock on the door. It's the ants. They've finally arrived. For opening, just make sure that everything's ready. The setup is prepared for the ants, and that you don't panic. You need to get them in the setup as soon as possible, as the fungus will die quickly in the wrong conditions. Here you can see me unwrapping the iconic yellow wrapping paper. Inside, 
we have a 25 gram bag of dried roses, a tube with some escape workers inside, a pipette, and of course, a care guide for the ants. And last, but certainly not least, the leaf cutters themselves, in all of their glory. The workers are obviously going to be in a panic and the fungus is going to be broken up because of shipping, but doesn't stop you from being able to admire them for a bit. There she is, the single most important member of the colony, the Queen. She is absolutely stunning. Now that you've finished admiring them, it's time to put them in their setup. Just simply crack open the lid and put it in the setup. As you can see, I've put some damp cocoa fibre next to the pot as well. You can play around with this cocoa fibre and use it however they want. Gap in the pot doesn't have to be too big, just big enough for workers to be able to go in and out and carry small fragments of leaves in. In the pot may result in some workers climbing out onto your hand and giving you a little bite, but don't worry, it doesn't hurt that much and it won't break the skin. Also, don't be alarmed if they don't start carrying cutting leaves in the first 24 to 48 hours. Most of this time will be used up repairing the fungus. I would still offer some dry rose petals anyway, whether they take it or not. Also, it's important to remember not to disturb them in the first few nights as these nights will determine if the colony makes it or not. The days go by, the fungus will start to get more repaired and the ants will become more eager to collect leaves. It's also important to feed a variety of leaves as the fungus needs different kinds to survive. This was my colony after roughly two to three weeks. As you can see, I've added a new top because the fungus got too big for the pot. They've also started to cut fresh leaves. The growth should be steady if the conditions are right. I'd also like to note that the fungus pot I have here isn't really ideal as it's got a nipple right in the center, meaning that condensation will inevitably drip onto the fungus. You want one, really, with a curved top, or flat, just so it doesn't drip directly onto the fungus. Let's say you've had the colony for a little over a month now, and they're starting to become quite eager to escape, or escape like mine did. Well, that means it's time to add some piping. It doesn't have to be too long because the colony is still small and just note that the earlier you add the piping, the slower the growth is going to be because they have to travel a certain distance. But hey, now you get to finally watch the ants carry leaves up and down the pipes. After a while, the rubbish in the fungal chamber will start to build up, so it's time to add the refuse chamber. And now we're here, in the present. Your colonies come so far, from when you first received them and moved them in, to when you got the first cover upgrade, all the way up until now. And there you have it. Raising Acromermex Octospinosis from the very beginning. Thank you all for watching. Please leave a comment down below on what you might want to see next. And hit the subscribe button if you're feeling nice. As always, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.